Hello, and welcome to another video presentation from Address Professional Services. My name is Greg Benson Shettle. I'm an application engineer here with Address. In this presentation, we're going to be taking a look at Autodesk's latest release of AutoCAD, AutoCAD 2013, and finding out what's new for this release. AutoCAD 2013 is all about communication, both in the ways that we present our designs through to how we actually share them. We've got a new DWG file format, which is supporting some of the new presentation style from the simplest of elements, such as the thumbnails, which are now PNG files, through to the more sophisticated tools that we're going to be looking at during the course. We're going to learn a host of new commands and improvements to some of your favorite AutoCAD tools that will increase your productivity, drawing creativity, and your communication with better collaboration tools. So, let's see what the 27th release of AutoCAD looks like. Right off the bat we can see that we've got a brand new welcome screen. This used to be called the Exchange, but in the new welcome screen you'll find it's far more useful than it ever has been before. Straight away you can look at new drawings, open up other files that you may have already on your system, and also to make it even easier there's your recent file lists. So you can scroll through your recent projects and open them directly from the welcome screen. We have our learning center and there's even a new app center, Autodesk Exchange Apps. Have a look in this area here, well worth a browse through. There's lots of apps that are add-ons to your AutoCAD, including free ones. And of course we've got Autodesk 360. With the latest version of Autodesk products, you've got a lot of tight integration. Straight off the welcome screen you can go into Autodesk 360. Autodesk 360 is your brand new web space from Autodesk. You can just sign up there, and even without subscription, you can get a 3 gigabyte file, or you can have, on subscription, 25 gigabytes of web space, where you can share your drawings and also use a lot of other additional features, such as rendering in the cloud. And of course, these days, we wouldn't be complete without our Facebook and Twitter accounts. So if you want to share your designs and thoughts on a particular project with people in your group, you can connect straight out of AutoCAD to Facebook and Twitter right here. Let's take a quick closer look at the Autodesk 360 integration that's built into the 2013 range of products. Looking up in the ribbon, you'll notice we have a new tab, Online. Click on the Online tab and you'll notice that you can get directly to your Autodesk 360 account from this button here. And also some other areas that could be of interest to you is sync my settings. So if you've got custom settings you can actually sync them to the cloud and then when you move to another PC maybe your home user license to continue some work at home you can come into the online area and then choose my settings and then download the settings exactly the same as you've got at work. So you can sync everything together directly via the Autodesk 360 cloud settings. Over the last few releases 3D modeling inside of AutoCAD and including rendering has become stronger and stronger. So if we just take a quick look at the rendering mode, we'll click on to 3D modeling from the quick start menu. And what we're going to find here is that we've actually got rendering tools here as well. Now what's really interesting with the 2013 releases, if I click on the render tab, what we'll find is you can now do your rendering up in the cloud via your Autodesk 360 account. Set up your views on the 3D model, click on render in the cloud, and then you can start the whole rendering process. You will be able to upload all your content, all the views that you've set up, and you can render in the cloud and that's going to release you to actually get on and do some work on your local workstation. You need an account. If you'd like to find out more about Autodesk 360, please look at our YouTube account. That'll be all the W's, youtube.com forward slash address, A D R I S L T D. And there you're going to find Autodesk 360 introduction, including rendering as well. One of the things you're going to notice is the command line. Where is it? Well, it's right here down at the bottom. It's now a floating command line and you can see that there's actually only one line available to start with. And this is because it's now an interactive command line. It's only going to become live 
when you actually need it to be. So for instance, if I start a standard polyline, start my first line, now you'll notice that all of a sudden the additional lines that you would normally have, for instance if you normally have your command line set to three lines, they appear because we now need them. Now in addition to this, you'll notice that I can actually now hover over the options. Rather than having to type them in, if I wanted to choose arc, I can now start drawing an arc. So all the options for any of the commands where you'd normally have to type in your just the capital letters, you can now just pick on. Nice and easy. And you'll notice when I actually finish this command, the three lines that we've got here will very soon just fade out of view. There we go. AutoCAD has been able to create reviews from 3D models directly onto paper space for a while now, and in 2013 this has been further improved. Let's take a look, and we'll start by demonstrating the whole process. After we've spent time developing an accurate 3D model, the next thing we have to do is actually think about detailing it. This has always been a bit time consuming, but now that's all changed. In AutoCAD 2013, the 3D modeling tools have been further improved with an emphasis on detailing. If we open up our layout ribbon, it reveals a whole new palette called the Create View. So how does this actually work? What it's going to do is allow us to easily create and generate views on a brand new layout. So how do we get started? We can use this base command. The first thing we have to do is specify that yes, we want to use the model space. Now we can see in the dynamic entry that it's asking us to select the objects. I'm going to take the easy route here and go down to the command line and just pick it because it's one of the options. So there's I've picked the entire object in the model. Next it's asking us to give our new layout a layout name. So I'm going to be calling this tray, A-S-S-Y, tray assembly. And we flip over into layout mode. So first of all it's going to generate a view. So there's a base view. Click there. We have various options that we can use. Change hidden lines for instance. Discuss the scale. Look at the various visibility aspects of it as well. But I'm going to go with what we have and accept that. And now I can simply start placing our various views around. Once I'm happy with those, once again I accept it, and AutoCAD starts generating our 2D views, which we can then reposition as we need to. I'm going to put the uh, isometric view up in the corner there, and then we can start detailing. We've got a few add-on options here. From here we can see that the scale of this particular view is actually designed and controlled from the parent view, our parent view being the first view that we place down. But if we wish to change it, we could. So that's how easy it is to now start creating views on your layout directly from your model. But that's not all we can do. Imagine trying to bring in a 3D inventor model into AutoCAD, and then trying to create elevations or even section views of that inventor model. Previously we may have had to export it out from Inventor, maybe as a SAT file, but now you can do it easily and quickly. This is probably one of the biggest improvements for detailing that AutoCAD has seen. It has now got some very tight integration with Inventor as far as detailing goes. Well, let's just see how easy it is. Once again, I've popped back into the model space. I didn't need to, but I just wanted to demonstrate the whole process. Once again, I'm going to go up to the base view. But this time I'm actually going to click on this so that the drop down, here is the detailing from model space. But there you find we have an icon that allows us to detail from inventor. It goes off and immediately looks for a directory where you may have your inventor files. Here we've got some inventor part files. You'll notice in the files are type that it supports all the main inventor file types that you would expect. Let's pick one. Uh, valve body, we'll go with that. So we will open valve body. Once again, looking at the dynamic entry, it's asking for a name for the new layout. So I'm going to pop in there valve body. 
and hit the return key and again it launches us into layout mode we've got a new layout there called valve body and AutoCAD 2013 is generating the base view for our valve body and there it is once again I can pick the base view I'll accept that and then start placing some alternative views around now keep in mind we're actually dealing directly with an inventor model inside of AutoCAD and there are our views so what else could we do with this so after using the new section view tool another new tool is a detail view so we click on one of our details and the drawing view ribbon appears what we can do from this drop down we can choose either circular or rectangular details let's do a circular one the process is the same for both pick the area that you want to highlight draw a circle around it and it generates the view from the inventor model and we can place it on our drawing sheet happy with that and once again it automatically gives us the detail letter for both parts if you're not happy with the placement of the letters just like any other text you can click on it and move it around and it even includes a leader line one other nice thing we can do is change the visibility on our isometric so let's click on the isometric view and then we go to edit view click on the hidden line appearance drop down and change it to visible lines and then to confirm our choice we just click on the green tick and there we have it ready-made elevations, sections and detail views that we can start dimensioning directly from your inventor models but inside of AutoCAD and they're dynamically linked so as soon as you update your inventor model these views will update as well